Welcome to her him where I eat a for talking about how much I make. I 17f work part time and have been at the same job for a year. All of my co-workers are very open about how much they make. And it's a frequent topic of discussion how unfairly our boss pays all of us. Recently, a new girl started and I was responsible for training her. Somehow, it came up how much she was making, and she told me a wage that was higher than my own. I was upset by this, obviously, and in my head immediately made plans to talk to my boss about a raise. My co-worker had just texted me asking how the new employee was doing, and I told him how much she was making which was. The next day when I came into work, he had told everyone about it, and people were understandably angry. A few approached our manager, and I guess some of them approached the boss. A lot of them were making significantly less than this new girl was supposedly making. Fast forward a couple of days to the next time. I was working with my boss. At the end of my shift, he pulls me aside and tells me that we need to talk. He starts telling me that he had a very difficult week because of me. He said that he had never had employees talk about their wages in the way my co-workers and I have. He knew I was the only one who had known how much the new girl was making and that I was the reason for these problems. He said that things are going to have to start changing around here, and that all the generous things he had been doing were coming to an end, that policies were going to change. So this didn't happen again in the future. He informed me that the new girl was not making the wage she had said, that she had been fired, and said, would you have believed her if she said she was making $35 an hour? Now. I know that it's illegal to prevent employees from discussing their wages with one another, but at the same time, it's common courtesy not to do so. I'm not sure what to do now, and I'm scared to go back into work tomorrow. I'm not convinced I'm in the right by any means. But Aita? Messing with inconsiderate neighbors. I live in an apartment building that is, oddly designed to say the least. My bedroom window directly faces the bedroom window of another apartment with about 6 feet between. Problem is, the windows have no soundproofing and my bedroom window buddies across the way have loudest sex I've ever heard. Like I can hear it through noise cancelling headphones type of loud and those headphones completely drowned out fireworks being set off in the parking lot next door on 4th of July. I have insomnia and they have woken me up or interrupted that moment right before I fall asleep with these awful sounds. Like go for it, but stop screaming the whole time and telling daddy how he's doing for all to hear. They also keep a ridiculous amount of crap in the hallway. A stack of shoeboxes as tall as me, and probably 10 shoeboxes long. Dog food, food odor powder, about 20 more pairs of shoes not in boxes, cleaning stuff, a whole ass side table, and more. It's disrespectful, and they are shitty people. They do more inconsiderate things than what I am sharing. Because of the insomnia and the fact I'm moving out soon, I've decided to be a bit mischievous. I made sure there were no doorbell cams, and the building doesn't have cameras. And now a few times a week when I can't sleep, I walk down the hall in the middle of the night and move some things around and kind of hide at least one thing. All very subtle. I hope it makes them question their sanity when things aren't where they left them. If I see foot odor powder on the windowsill again, I'm chucking that shit out the window without hesitation. Tifu by rescuing a squirrel from my dog. Happened yesterday. I was inside the house when I heard my wife call out. Babe. Jay got a squirrel. Knowing my wife's aversion to dead animals, I put on my shoes and head outside to the backyard and find our dog in the bushes. I look down and see the squirrel on his back. Splayed out. Seeing the squirrel's eyes still open and moving, I pull Jay away and pick up the squirrel. With no blood, no apparent broken bones, I set the squirrel right and it limp scampered away. I bring Jay back to the back door and hold her there for a bit, allowing enough time for the squirrel to get out of the backyard. After a couple minutes, I let Jay go and she went on the hunt. It didn't take her long to find the squirrel again, and again, I went to go take care of what I thought would surely be a dead squirrel. After all, Jay is a terrier mix, and well, Pitbulls have strong bites. Nope, the squirrel was back in the splayed out position, and Jay was right over the squirrel, teasing or taunting him like the squirrels had done to her. I pick up the squirrel, see that he's still breathing, and can feel his heart beating rapidly. But the squirrel seemed lethargic, 
and I honestly wasn't sure he was going to make it. Still, with some life in him, I decided to release the squirrel in the front yard, and let it decide where he wants to die, if it was indeed the end for him. I went through our garage, and as I pressed the button to open up the garage door, the squirrel seemed to become more active and alive again. And then the rat bastard bit me. Not once, not twice, but three times. I finally get out to the front and more or less drop the squirrel who scampered away, limping. It was at this moment that I thought, I really should have let Jay finish the squirrel, ETA. At the suggestion of many caring individuals, I will be heading to urgent care tonight to address any possible infections, including rabies, just to make sure. Thank you all for the outpouring of advice. I tend to be stubborn at times. Tifu telling my girlfriend 22, how I 23M met my friends. A couple of nights ago my girlfriend was supposed to meet my friends. I've been delaying the process for months because I knew I had to have an uncomfortable conversation first. I met my friends at an orgy. My roommate at the time asked for my permission to host an orgy at our flat. I said yes. As long as my room and my belongings were off limits and the flat was cleaned properly afterwards. My plan was to spend the night at my mom's house and be out of everyone's way during the orgy, but my roommate encouraged me to stay and participate. I was still a virgin back then. The thought of sleeping with one person was overwhelming enough, let alone a group of people. However, my roommate eventually convinced me to take part. I was added to a group chat with all the people who were gonna be involved in the orgy. All of them made me feel really comfortable. That being said, when the orgy finally happened, I was unable to have sex with anyone. My anxiety won. Everyone was understanding, though. Life went on. My roommate became my ex roommate after a few months, but we never stopped being friends. The connections I made with the people at the orgy also developed into friendships. We're still friends now. My girlfriend didn't know my history with them until earlier this week when I finally had the courage to explain the orgy story. She was shocked and disturbed and asked if I lied to her about being a virgin when we met. I said no, she struggled to believe that a virgin guy would walk away from an orgy with his virginity still intact. My girlfriend made it clear that she was no longer interested in meeting my friends. She said she didn't know how she could be in a relationship with someone who was friends with people who shared him. I asked my girlfriend if she was breaking up with me, and she said she was gonna need some time to decide what to do. Last night, she decided. Our relationship is over. TL. DR I told my girlfriend that I met my friends at an orgy. That was all she needed to hear to break up with me. Tifu playing pool. Tifu earlier this morning was at a bar with my husband playing pool. I was drunk and kept hitting my right hand really hard on the pool table since the table was in a small area. The walls were less than five feet from the edges. I wear two rings on my right hand, ring and middle finger. The middle finger has a ring my grandma gave me. She let me pick it out of her jewelry so I can have something to remember her by when she passes. Anyway, since I kept slamming my hand into the table on accident, bruising the bone in my finger, the ring my grandma gave me ended up bending horribly around my finger to where I couldn't take it off. But I didn't notice until about 20 minutes ago. I started trying to take it off, saw how distorted it was. Got so upset that I started crying and shaking because I ruined a very sentimental item. My poor husband, who was sitting right next to me, saw me burst into tears while pulling at my finger and tried to figure out what happened. Doesn't help I ruined a pair of shorts not 5 minutes prior from starting my period, so I showed him my bent ring. Through tears, explained what happened while still trying to pry the ring off, and he got pliers. He got it bent back enough to take it off and told me it looked like it was melted. Well, it's still bent, but not as bad as I made it, and unfortunately, I didn't get a picture of it. Tleeter Tifu playing pool in a small area. Kept slamming my hand accidentally into the pool table, thus bending the ring my grandma gave to me and bruising the bone on my middle finger. Didn't notice until a bit ago, and started sobbing sort of scaring my husband. Ring bent so bad my husband said it looked like it was melted and got it off with pliers. Also ruined a pair of shorts from my period starting minutes before noticing my ring was horribly distorted. Tifu by going fishing in a canoe, 
I've been a non-stop working kind of guy for my whole life. When I was married nights and weekends were all about doing things to keep the wife happy. After she left, I started drinking every night and working every day. I quit drinking 2.5 years ago, but kept working. I have a small business and there is always a customer with a problem. This past year, he decided I need to learn to relax, so I raised my rate for weekend work to the same as my shop rate. That cut out a lot of simple stuff that the customer could do. I also started telling my one customer that I'll be down to fix or repair his tools in the winter cause, I'm fishing dot 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 so, that's what I have been doing to relax. That in naps. My business is on the water, on sort of a dead end cut on a river. Sometimes I fish off one of my docks. Sometimes I'll find a freshwater spot. I'm not very good at it. I generally get tangles or catch a tree branch. But the important thing is I'm having a good time, and I'm not working. Last weekend, I went out in the river in a canoe. I wasn't out there long because I caught a perch, a catfish, and an eel. The eel ruined the trip for me. It turned my fishing rig into a big knot and wrapped its slimy self around my arm while I was unhooking it. Nasty things. Gives me the chills. Today, I decided to try again. It was a beautiful day with a cool breeze. Just perfect for being out on the water. I only caught one perch, but I caught a lot of catfish. They all get thrown back because I haven't learned to clean them so I can eat them yet. Maybe next year. Anyhow, I had a blast. Only reason I came back in was because I needed to pee. I was out there for 4 hours.